Cell and Tissue Regeneration of Starfish and Zebrafish by Aaron Haycraft. Ancient Greek mythology tells the tale of Prometheus, a titan who offends Zeus and is punished by Zeus's eagle pecking out his liver every day, which regenerates every night only to be pecked out again the following day. This has inspired man to wonder if this can translate to other parts of the human body. Echinoderms, like this blue starfish, have a unique ability to do just that. If lost, their limbs and internal organs can be regenerated. This process happens in a relatively short amount of time, given human beings cannot regenerate their own limbs. Scientists now are studying ways to adapt this ability natural to echinoderms, to humans, hopefully, in the field of regenerative medicine. Modeled in clay is that process. Here's a starfish living his life and growing. He accidentally loses a limb as a meal to a fish that swims by. The wound heals, then the limb regrows. And in practical application, we can see the same thing with segmented starfish. The wound heals and the limbs Regrow. This is programmed in the DNA. Same for the zebrafish. A segmented tail regrows just like the original, this time in less than 14 days. Programmed in the DNA of the echinoderm and the zebrafish is the ability to regrow these limbs and organs. DNA is translated into, transcripted into RNA and translated into the proteins that build these limbs anew. The regenerative process for a more evolved creature here, assuming it may be a salamander, is much more involved. You have osseous tissue, more muscle tissue, epithelial tissue, uh, blood and vessel tissue, and nervous tissue to account for. In humans, wouldn't it be amazing to regrow damaged tissues like the lungs? We would first start with the cells. The cells would need a scaffolding. That scaffolding would also have to adapt to a cellular matrix to give these cells what they need. With pressure and time, these cells could become tissues. The tissues would become organs. Cardiac tissue, nervous tissue, osseous tissue, and again, back to the epithelial tissue of the heart itself. Using the scaffolding to begin to grow the tissues around the new organ, this is a viable process in science. There's a mock scaffolding. We've been able to grow sections of eyes, nervous tissue, epithelial tissue, and even trachea. Things we can learn from echinoderms and zebrafish. Who would have ever thought that by studying starfish and zebrafish, scientists would have made advancements in the field of regenerative medicine, allowing human beings to regrow and regenerate their own tissues, organs, 
and maybe someday limbs. Maybe the ancient Greeks did. 